the petrous part of temporal bone is having opening on the inner side that is called internal acoustic meter and this is the external acoustic meter so what happened first of all the nerve comes out and it is passing laterally then it is reaching on the part of internal acoustic meter enter into the internal acoustic meter now one thing as this nerve enters into the internal acoustic meter along it listen carefully the facial nerve enters into the internal acoustic meter along it the vestibular cochlear nerve that is the eighth cranial nerve also enter and the third thing labyrinthine artery also enters into the internal acoustic meter so three structures entering into the internal acoustic meter facial nerve vestibular cochlear nerve and labyrinthine artery as the nerve passing into the internal acoustic meter the motor route of facial nerve it passes along the vestibular cochlear nerve you can say that sensory route remains separate but as it comes out from the internal acoustic meter later on the two route motor route and sensory route both route join and forming the facial nerve trunk that means as it is passing through the internal acoustic meter the two route remain separate but as it comes out the two route join together and after coming out from this the nerve enters into the petrous part of temporal bone the petrous part of temporal bone is having the another bony canal and that is called facial canal that is called facial canal now look this part this is the pons and that is the internal acoustic meter so the nerve enters into the internal acoustic meter then passing into the petrous part of temporal bone and this canal is called facial canal this canal is called facial canal as the nerve in enters into the facial canal first of all it is lying over the part of swelling and that is the swelling of internal ear that is the swelling of the internal ear so look this diagram it as it enters here in the facial canal it is turned backward and lying over this part of the internal ear swelling and passing laterally then again it turns so you can see the turn of here and then it is passing backward and then again medially that i will tell you separately so what happens that after coming out from the internal acoustic meter the facial nerve enters into the facial canal where is the facial canal facial canal is present in the petrous part of temporal bone the course of facial nerve in the petrous part of temporal bone again we talk separately at present you understand what is the general course of facial nerve it comes out from the pontomedullary junction enters into the internal acoustic meter along with the three nerves the vestibular cochlear nerve and the labyrinthine artery as it comes out from the internal acoustic meter it enters into the facial canal in the facial canal we will talk separately the course is labyrinthine segment the part tympanic segment mastoid segment that i will tell you just now so it comes into the facial canal after coming out from the facial canal look this diagram again this is the course in the facial canal then it comes out through the foramen and that foramen is called stylomastoid foramen so it comes out through the stylomastoid foramen and enters into the parotid gland it is lying deep to the parotid gland where it gives the many terminal branches so that is the course of facial nerve so we will talk the course of facial nerve in the part of the pons pontine course course in the facial canal and course in the parotid gland okay
Now look here. Look this diagram again. I am talking of the course of patient up in the one time or course. What is this? Motor nucleus of patient up. The fibers from motor nucleus of patient up arise, passing backward, upward. Look the diagram, then write. Try to understand. The fibers arise from the motor nucleus of patient up, ascending upwards, and passing medial side of the abducens nucleus. That is the nucleus of the sixth cranial nerve. Then it is passing upwards and making a circle around the abducens nucleus. And then it comes downward and passing between the, this is the motor nucleus of patient nerve and this is the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve and comes out. So this looping of the patient nerve fibers to abducens nucleus, very simple thing that I am telling you. Fascia nerve ke fibers up and down. Abducent nucleus ko surround kiya. Then descending downward, passing forward between the spinal nucleus of trigeminal nerve and motor nucleus of fascia nerve and comes out. So this course of the fascia nerve, the fibers of the fascia nerve which is looping the abducent nucleus now is forming the swelling is forming the swelling in the floor of fourth ventricle. When we will talk of the brain, you will, we will discuss that there is a swelling in the floor of fourth ventricle. That swelling of fourth ventricle is formed by this looping of the fusion of fibers. Okay? Very simple thing. The fibers of fascia nerve, as it comes out from the motor nucleus, they are forming the loop around the abducent nucleus. Listen, why don't the fibers come directly out? The fibers of motor nucleus, they, are, they can come directly out, but not. Their course is different. They are ascending upwards, making a loop around the abducent nucleus and comes out. And this is forming the swelling in the Floor of fourth ventricle, facial colliculus. So this is the course of facial nerve in the pontine or in the pons. Now see in the petrous part of temporal bone. Look this diagram. This is the part of middle ear and this is the part of internal ear, cochlea and the part promontory and this. I am not talking of detail. Look here. This is the internal acoustic meters. The facial nerves, first of all, passing through the internal acoustic meters and then it is reaching to the anterior superior angle of the medial wall of middle ear. The middle ear is this one and look the first part. On the first part, the green color fascia nerve enters into the petrous part of temporal bone lying superior to the part of swelling of the petrous part of temporal bone, that is the internal ear. <coughs> then it is reaching to the part of junction of medial wall and posterior wall, that is at this angle. See the second part. As the nerve comes here, it turns, it slightly turns and look, you can see here, the direction is here is straight, but as it comes to the second point, it is slightly turned on this side. After this turning, again it is passing horizontally in the medial wall of the middle ear and reaching up to the part at the junction of, this is the medial wall. This third number is the medial ball of the middle ear and it is reaching at the point fourth which is the junction point of medial ball and posterior ball of the middle ear and finally it comes vertically downwards and comes out through the stylo mesoid forum. The very important part that this patient nerve is having very important relation to the medial ball of the middle ear. Look here, what is this? 
as it comes out from the internal acoustic meters, it is reaching into the part of junction of anterior superior angle of the medial wall of the middle ear. And here it is slightly turned at the point 2. And this second point, where it is slightly thicker, this thickness of the point where the nerve is turning and laterally, this is slightly thicker and this thickness of this point is due to presence of ganglion and that is called genicular ganglion. I will use this word genicular ganglion very important. So genicular ganglion is present where the facial nerve is turned and comes into the medial wall. That is this part, third number. That is the medial wall of middle ear, where the nerve becomes horizontal and reaching up to the part of fourth number. The fourth number is the point where the medial wall and this is the posterior wall, fifth is the posterior wall of the middle ear. So both are joined here. So at the junction of posterior medial wall, the nerve turns downward and becomes vertical and finally comes out through the stylo mesoid forum. So this is the course of facial nerve in the petrous part of temporal bone. So remember the genicular ganglion. Where it is present, that is at the junction of the anterior medial ball. And the nerve is turned at this side. After this, as the nerve comes out from the stylo mesoid foramen, the nerve is passing into the base of the skull and here it is lying on the medial side of the stylet process. This is the stylet process. The nerve is lying on the medial side of the stylet process and passing deep to the parotid gland. As it comes, this hole is the parotid gland. As the nerve comes into the parotid gland, it gives the terminal branches. So all these are the terminal branches of facial nerve. In the parotid gland, the nerve is crossing the structures. And these structures which are crossed by the nerve, look the diagram. This is the facial nerve. It is crossing the retromandibular vein and external carotid artery, which are also lying in the parotid gland. When you will dissect the parotid gland, you will see these structures, retromandibular vein and external carotid artery. The facial nerve is crossing all these two structures and it gives all the terminal branches deep to the parotid gland. This facial nerve, it is giving the branches and these branches are the branches above the part of before the parotid gland and the branches of facial nerve as it comes into the parotid gland. We divide the branches of facial nerve into two parts. The branches of facial nerve before it is passing into the parotid gland. And second, the branches, terminal branches of the facial nerve which it gives as the nerve is passing deep to the parotid gland. So see the branches which are given by the facial nerve before it is passing into the parotid gland. Look this one. This is the genicular ganglion. From the genicular ganglion, the nerve arising is the greater petrosal nerve. That is important and I will talk it in detail. Greater petrosal nerve which is coming from the genicular ganglion. After this, see the next. Nerve to stipedius. Stipedius is muscle of the ear which is damping the large sound before entering into the internal ear. DJ Sunte, large sound are That large sound is damped slow by this muscle, stipedius. The contraction of the stipedius muscle is damping down the sound 
entering into the internal ear. If such a large sound enters into the internal ear, it will rupture the cochlea and the skin. So this is the normal phenomenon. The stiferous muscle is damping the sound of large sound before entering into the internal ear. Okay. So when this muscle is paralyzed, the nerve supply of this muscle is paralyzed, the normal sound will also feel the person as large sound. And that condition is called hyperacosis. Hyperacosis. H by B E R A C Q U I S I S. Hyperacosis is the person feel large sound of the normal sound. And that result due to paralysis of the muscle stipidus. Okay. So second is the muscle supplying nerves which is supplying to the stupidious muscle, that is this one. First is the greater petrosal nerve, that is this one, which is coming from the genicular ganglion. And second, nerve to stupidious muscle, that is this one. The third one, I am telling you, all these are the branches of facial nerve before the nerve entering into the parotid gland. Okay? Abhi tak parotid gland mein nahi aayi. Second, the cauda tympani now. Again, this is very important now. I will talk this in detail. Cauda tympani now arising from the fissure now, about 6 cm above the stylomastoid foramen. 6 mm above the stylomastoid foramen, the cauda tympani nerve arising from the fissure now. You can see here, that is this one. Then posterior auricular nerve, this one. The posterior auricular nerve. This posterior auricular nerve, it is passing behind the external acoustic meters, reaching the temporal bone. And as it comes here, it divides into the auricular branch and temporal branch. The occipital branch is supplying to the occipital belly of occipital frontalis muscle. There is the muscle. What is the name of this muscle? That is having the frontal part and occipital part. So, occipital part is supplying by this posterior auricular branch, which is dividing into the temporal and auricular. And auricular branch is supplying to the auricular muscle. Auricular part or posterior auricular branch is supplying to the auricular muscle. Look here, what is this? Posterior auricular branch. This posterior auricular branch ascending upwards, reaching the temporal region. As it comes into the temporal region, it divides into two. Occipital part branch that is supplying to the occipital part of the occipitofrontalis muscle. And auricular branch supplying to the muscle of the auricle. Now coming downwards. Here, the two more branches. One is supplying to the posterior belly of digastric muscle. Now, which is supplying to the posterior belly of digastric muscle. Have you read the digastric muscle? It is having the anterior belly and posterior belly. Posterior belly is supplied by the posterior belly of digastric muscle, which is the branch of patient now. And anterior belly is supplied by? Yes. That is from the myeloid. Okay. So, this is the posterior belly of digastric muscle arising and supplying to the posterior belly of digastric muscle. Then the one more now, which is supplying to the stylohyoid muscle. That is supplying to the stylohyoid muscle. So, all these are the branches of facial nerve which are coming before entering into the parotid gland. Okay? All these are the branches of facial nerve before the nerve comes into the parotid gland. As the nerve comes into the parotid gland, it gives the terminal branches. And these terminal branches are the temporal branch. 
you can see here this is the temporal branch and then the zygomatic branch and also the buccal branches buccal branches which are again the two upper buccal branches lower buccal branches and look here this is the buccal branch which is dividing into the upper buccal branch and lower buccal branch and one more nerve terminal branch which is running along the lower border of the mandibular and that is called the lower marginal mandibular branch and the another important branch which is supplying to the platysma cervical branch of facial nerve so all these are the terminal branches of the facial nerve out of all these you have read and they all are the muscle of facial expression but i will talk about the two nerves in detail one is the greater petrosal nerve now for this the look the diagram again look one this is the part of the bone here this is the genicular ganglion petrous part of the temporal bone and here is present the genicular ganglion as i told you previously the greater petrosal nerve arises from the genicular ganglion it arises from the genicular ganglion then it is passing in the petrous part of the temporal bone running its course and reaching downward reaching downward and coming at the part just below the lesser the foramen just below the trigeminal ganglion deep to the trigeminal ganglion and finally it comes out below the part of the foramen lacerum look here this is the trigeminal ganglion so the nerve is passing deep to the trigeminal ganglion and then it comes below the foramen lacerum that is this part at the below the foramen lacerum look here this is the internal carotid artery this internal carotid artery is surrounding by the sympathetic fibers this internal carotid artery is surrounding by the sympathetic fibers and these sympathetic fibers which are surrounding the internal carotid artery are named as the petrosal nerve are named as deep petrosal nerve so what is the deep petrosal nerve it is the bundle of sympathetic fibers which are surrounding the internal carotid artery that is very clear in this diagram look the diagram again this is the internal carotid artery it is surrounding by the sympathetic fibers so this is the deep petrosal nerve and what is this greater petrosal nerve so just below the foramen lacerum the greater petrosal nerve join with the deep petrosal nerve it joins with the deep petrosal nerve the joining of the two is forming the nerve to pterygoid canal so this is the nerve to pterygoid canal this nerve to pterygoid canal running its course into the pterygoid canal and comes here into the pterygopalatine fossa where it is present have you read the infratemporal fossa no not yet पूछना बेकार है एवरी थिंग इज लॉस्ट टेरिगो पेलेटाइन फोसा इज प्रेजेंट जस्ट बिलो द पार्ट ऑफ इंफ्रा टेम्पोरल फोसा एंड इन द इंफ्रा टेम्पोरल फोसा और फॉर गेट दैट यू जस्ट रिमेंबर इट कम्स इन टू द पार्ट ऑफ टेरिगो पेलेटाइन फोसा in pterygopalatine fossa there is ganglion that is called pterygopalatine ganglion kal aapne 2 ghante kya padha maxillary nerve padh li have you read with maxillary nerve yesterday mandibular and what about ophthalmic and not the maxillary which are supplying to the upper jaw teeth of the upper jaw okay see here at present look here the pterygopalatine nerve to pterygoid look here 
this is the pterygoid canal so deep petrosal nerve and greater petrosal nerve join and forming the nerve to pterygoid canal that is this one running its course into the pterygoid canal comes into the pterygopalatine ganglion try to understand both simplified bata raha hu aapko ye ganglion dikh raha hai aapko this ganglion is connected with the maxillary nerve ये मैगजेलिन नर्व दिख रही है आपको ऊपर एंड दिस गैंग्लियन इज कनेक्टेड विद दैगजेलिन नर्व बाय दिस टू गैंग्लियोनिक फाइबर्स लिसन इट इज यूजिंग द मैगजेलिन नर्व बट मैगजेलिन नर्व इज नॉट कंसर्न विद दिस इट इज टेकिंग एडवांटेज ऑफ मैगजेलिन नर्व सो फाइबर्स दैट इज इट कम्स इन टू दैरिगो पेलेटाइन गैंग्लियोन द greater petrosal nerve pass joined with the deep petrosal nerve forming nerve to pterygoid canal and this nerve to pterygoid canal relay its fibers into the pterygopalatine ganglion okay and it finish here the post ganglionic fibers arising from pterygopalatine ganglion they through the ganglionic branches or look here these are the two branches which attach to the maxillary nerve so these fibers post ganglionic fibers passing through these two ganglionic branches comes into the maxillary nerve they are not concerned with the functional part with the maxillary nerve they are just using the pathway nothing else passing through the maxillary nerve and the branches of maxillary nerve zygomatico temporal branch and through the zygomatic temporal branch it relay into the lacrimal gland secretomotor fibers into the lacrimal gland and also to the nasal cavity the mucosa of the nasal cavity or palate that is the pathway of lacrimal secretion i am telling you again don't worry this is commonly asked the question comes describe the pathway of the lacrimal gland this diagram again the fibers i am telling you about the pathway of lacrimal gland these fibers these are the general visceral efferent fibers what is the component general visceral efferent that is the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers they arise from the lacrimal nucleus where the lacrimal nucleus present in the brain stem along with the superior salivary nucleus so the free ganglionic parasympathetic fibers they arise from the lacrimal nucleus they are descending downwards in the petrous part of the temporal bone and coming here and they are running its course downward along with the greater petrosal nerve this greater petrosal nerve which is part of the genicular ganglion and the nerve fibers they join here relaying into pterygopalatine ganglion the post ganglionic fibers of pterygopalatine ganglion along with the this is the maxillary nerve look here they run along the five branch of the maxillary nerve ganglionic branch and then along the zygomatico temporal branch of the maxillary nerve they run their course and this zygomatico temporal branch join with the lacrimal nerve and finally they relay into the lacrimal gland so this is the complete pathway of lacrimal gland that is the one in general visceral efferent component there is another secretomotor pathway of the submandibular and sublingual gland so look that the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers of submandibular gland and sublingual gland they arise from the superior salivary nucleus they arise from the superior salivary nucleus which is again present in the brain stem close to the lacrimal nucleus the fibers descending downwards and these fibers they are 
the fibers of the part of the lacrimal gland and also the submandibular gland and sublingual gland they are coming out through the part of sensory root nervous intermediates and as they comes down reaching to the part of genicular ganglion and finally they pass through the facial nerve and look here the facial nerve here it is joined with the lingual nerve as we comes to the part of infratemporal fossa the facial nerve reaching down in the infratemporal fossa and join with the lingual nerve just deep to the branch of their i will show you the diagram again just wait complete this one then i will show you that part as it join here with the lingual nerve the facial nerve is giving the fibers and that fibers running downwards most of these fibers relaying here into the submandibular ganglion so the fibers which are relaying into the submandibular ganglion or sublingual gland ganglion these are the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers so preganglionic parasympathetic fibers which are coming from the superior salivary nucleus they run their course along the facial nerve and join with the lingual nerve and relaying here into the two ganglion from the both ganglion the post ganglionic fibers arise and they are relaying into the corresponding submandibular gland and sublingual gland so that is the pathway of submandibular gland and sublingual gland look this part that i will tell you just after this that next now which is very important coratimpanai now the coratimpanai now this now is arising from the facial now this is the stylomastoid foramen 6 mm about the stylomastoid foramen this now comes out and it enters into the posterior look this part this is the opening of the middle ear middle ear is also named as tympanum middle ear is also named as tympanum because it is having the tympanic cavity that is you can see this fibrous part of the tympanic cavity and these are the two ossicles of the middle ear that is one is the malleus and another is incus and this is complete part of the tympanic membrane so cora tympani now after arising from the facial nerve enters into the posterior canalicus as it is enter through the posterior canalicus the rest of the part of facial nerve the cora tympani nerve is in close relationship with the tympanic membrane it is in close relation with the tympanic membrane and the nerve is passing between the malleus and incus these are the ossicle of the internal ear so it is passing between the malleus and incus and comes to the anterior part of the tympanic membrane finally it comes out through the anterior canaliculus as it comes out through the anterior canaliculus it is lying below in the petrotympanic fissure that is the part of the lower part of the outer part of the or you can say the base of the skull there is a petrotympanic fissure so the nerve comes out through the medial end of the petrotympanic fissure and as it is coming down this is the stylet process look this is the stylet process so lying on the medial side of the stylet process and this is the auriculo temporal nerve which is lying on the lateral side of the stylet process the nerve reaching downward in the or coming in the infratemporal fossa this is here the infratemporal fossa so now running in the infratemporal fossa and passing or deep to the inferior alveolar nerve and reaching to the joint with the lingual nerve joint with the lingual nerve the coratimpanai nerve is having the two type of fibers one is the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers that is supplying the secretomotor fibers to the sublingual gland and submandibular gland and another it is having the special 
somatic afferent that is it carries the taste sensation from anterior to third part of tongue so two type of fibers are present in the cor tympani nerve one is the it is carrying the taste sensation bring the taste sensation from anterior to third part of the tongue and these sensations they will reach to the nucleus tractus solitor that i will tell you just now at present you understand cora tympani is having the two type of fiber one is the special somatic afferent which carries the taste sensation another is the general visceral efferent that is three ganglionic parasympathetic fibers to the part of some mandibular gland and sublingual gland now what happens the cell body of general somatic afferent and cell body of special visceral afferent i am using the word afferent their cell bodies are located in the part of genicular ganglion so the peripheral process they are reaching to the for anterior to third part of the tongue and the central process which is arising from genicular ganglion and reaching to the nucleus tractus solitoris i don't think that you will remember so much you just remember the cor tympani now is having the two type of fibers okay one it carries the taste sensation from anterior to third part of tongue another is it is having the pre ganglionic parasympathetic fibers for the secretory motor pathway of some mandibular and sublingual gland okay the taste sensation this sensation they finally reach to the nucleus tractus solitoris kitna to yaad rahega okay another part that as previously i told you that facial nerve is very frequently paralyzed the paralysis of facial nerve there may be the injury or may be infection the infection may be at the nucleus level or below the nucleus level मैडम किताब को बाद में पढ़ लेना मैं दो किताबें और भी बताऊं किताब कौन कौन सी देखनी है आपको देर इज द पार्ट अपर मोटर न्यूरोन पाथवे पैरालिसिस एंड लोअर मोटर न्यूरोन पैरालिसिस वेरी सिंपल अपर मोटर दैट मींस द इंफेक्शन और द इंजरी कैन बी एट द न्यूक्लियस लेवल और अब द न्यूक्लियस लेवल that is called upper motor nerve and at the level of nucleus level if there is the infection or the injury or below this that is called intra nuclear pulse when you become doctor you have to differentiate whether the paralysis is upper motor neuron or lower motor neuron to understand this they look try to understand the upper half of the face that means at this level of the face is receiving the nerve supply the cortico nuclear fibers which are curving coming from cerebral cortex that are called cortico nuclear fibers so upper half of the face receiving the cortico nuclear fibers from both the sides that means from this side also from this side the same on this side simple but lower half of the face is receiving the cortico nuclear fibers from opposite side that means the lower half of the face of this side receiving the cortico nuclear fibers of this side aap dono khado jao get up i say get up for you and also you what is the sense of coming in the classes in so easy way i am telling you when you are continuously talking i don't tolerate this thing. i can take the class and 
Lord. This will help you in the after doing the MBBS. Sit down. Very good. The upper half of the face is receiving the corticonuclear fibers from both the side of cerebral hemisphere. That means if there is an injury or infection in the upper part of the nucleus, it will not affect no paralysis of upper half of the face. If there is an infection or injury, still it is receiving the fiber from opposite side. So there is no paralysis of upper half of the face. Only the paralysis is seen in the lower half of the face. If there is an injury on the right side, then there will be paralysis of the left side of the lower half because it is receiving the corticonuclear fibers from opposite half. So, in case of upper motor neuron palsy, there is no paralysis. And another important thing, the upper motor neuron palsy is and lower motor neuron palsy, they are associated with the hemiplegia. It is hemiplegia, paralysis of half of the body. But the upper half of the face is safe. It is not showing any paralysis. The reason is because upper half of the face is receiving the corticonuclear fibers from both the sides of cerebral hemisphere. Only the lower half of the face will be paralyzed and that will be receiving the nerve fiber. If the left side paralyzes, it will be paralyzed the injury right side. That they are receiving the corticonuclear fibers of opposite side of cerebral hemisphere. Okay, is it clear? So upper motor neuron palsy and lower motor neuron palsy can easily identify. Another part. In lower motor neuron palsy, if it is complete, then half of the face will be paralyzed. Look this diagram. This is the cerebral cortex. The fibers look the upper half of the face. They are receiving the corticonuclear fibers are from both the sides of cerebral cortex. And this is the lower half of the face, which is receiving the corticonuclear fibers from the opposite half. In case of upper motor neuron palsy, that means this is the upper motor neuron laser. There will be what will be the condition of the face? This. Only the lower half of the face will be paralyzed. No paralysis in the upper half of the face. And that is seen in the upper motor neuron palsy. And this is the lower motor neuron palsy. If the lower motor neuron, that means the nucleus, either the infection in the nucleus or below this nucleus, that is called infranuclear and nuclear region. Both are coming under the head of lower motor neuron palsy. In lower motor neuron palsy, the half of the face is paralyzed. Half of the face is paralyzed. So we can differentiate by seeing the condition of the patient. If half of the face is paralyzed, that means lower motor neuron palsy. The infection can be either in the nucleus or in the infranuclear level. In infranuclear lesion, again, the condition depends upon at what part there is lesion of the facial nerve. That I will tell you again. First thing, you can easily say that upper motor neuron palsy or lower motor neuron palsy by looking the face. All right. If the infranuclear palsy is complete, then complete half of the face is paralyzed. Besides that, if the lesion is not complete, infranuclear palsy, I am talking of the infranuclear palsy. If the nucleus is completely lost, then half of the face is paralyzed. If the 
lesion is present at different level then it gives the different positions the commonest site where the facial nerve is injured is just above the stylo mastoid foramen and in children it is very common in cold season in cold time this part of the stylo mastoid foramen due to very cold this part of the facial nerve can be affected or that is called the bell's palsy that is called bell's palsy or it may be just about at the origin just about the origin of cord tympani nerve or it may be affected just about the origin of from the genicular ganglion so these are the different sites if the nerve is involved at this different levels then the patient is also showing the different conditions look here this is the bell's palsy the bell's palsy is result when the nerve is injured at the level of stylo mastoid foramen or just above the stylo mastoid foramen the patient is showing this condition look here look this diagram there is no frontal rows absence of the frontal rows you can see on this side is normal and second person is unable to close the eye see the diagram the person there is no furrows on the affected side that nice side and person is unable to close the eye the palpebral fissure is also increased and nasio labial furrow is absent nasio labial furrow ye dikh rahi hai aapko this is the nasio labial furrow on the affected side the nasio labial furrow is absent and the tears are coming as the person is unable to close the eye the tears are coming down and look the angle of the mouth angle of the mouth is also deviated towards normal side and another thing by mastication of the food when the person is eating food the food is engulfed in the affected side of oral cavity the reason is the buccinator muscle is paralyzed so food is also engulfed in the affected side of the oral cavity so such condition is called bell's palsy this is called bell's palsy and bell's palsy is resulting at the injury of patient nerve at the level of either at the stylo mastoid foramen or just about the stylo mastoid foramen now you will understand see this diagram this is the injury of patient nerve just above the stylo mastoid foramen and this will result into the bell's palsy if the lesion of facial nerve is just above the cord tympani nerve look the b part i am talking of intranuclear palsy the intranuclear palsy is depending upon where is the lesion so first i have told you about the injury at the stylo mastoid foramen or just above the stylo mastoid foramen that resulting into the bell's palsy and second if the lesion of facial nerve is just above the origin of cord tympani nerve that is b part the person is showing the bell's palsy plus the function of cord tympani nerve is also lost and what is the function of cord tympani nerve secretion of submandibular gland and sublingual gland that will also lost and the person is unable to take that taste sensation from anterior to third part of tongue so all will result if the injury is at the just above the origin of cord tympani nerve okay madam sun lijiye this is so important and very interesting part you can easily remember 
अब आप खड़े हो जाइए यस गर्ल यू गड आई एम टेलिंग यू बहुत आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू सी सच ए पुलिस चैप सी द इंजरी ऑफ फेशियर नर्व एट द सी पॉइंट वॉट नर्व इज कमिंग एट द सी पॉइंट नर्व टू स्टीपीडियस नर्व टू स्टीपीडियस एंड स्टीपीडियस इज द मसल विच इज डेम्पिंग द साउंड लाउड साउंड इन टू द नॉर्मल साउंड बिफोर पासिंग इन टू द इंटरनल ईयर सो इंजरी एट दिस सी पॉइंट रिजल्टिंग इन टू द पैरलिस ऑफ द स्टीपीडियस मसल सो पर्सन which is who is having the injury at this point will feel the loud sound of the normal sound and unable to listen the normal sound and that is called maine naam bola tha bhi boliye hyperacusis see the condition hyperacusis that is called hyperacusis that means the paralysis of stapedius muscle resulting into the receiving the normal sound another reason is at the level of d d point and that is the genicular ganglion that is at the genicular ganglion so if there is the injury of the patient now at the level of genicular ganglion that will result into the paralysis or affecting the branches or the greater pterygoid nerve what nerve is coming from the ganglion greater pterygoid nerve and greater pterygoid nerve is carrying the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers of lacrimal glands so the secretion of lacrimal gland will be stopped okay the secretion of lacrimal gland will be stopped greater pterygoid nerve which joined with the deep pterygoid nerve what is forming nerve to pterygoid canal and nerve to pterygoid canal relaying into the pterygopalatine ganglion the ganglionic fibers post ganglionic fibers they supplying the lacrimal gland so one is this plus listen again very carefully the lesion at this d point that is just about the genicular ganglion no doubt the lacrimal secretion will be lost and what about happen jo below wala part hai wo to continue rahega okay so the lesion at the d point will result into the patient will show the bell's palsy wo to niche ho gaye patient will show the bell's palsy and also the loss of taste sensation from anterior to third part of tongue and also the hyperacusis besides this will also show the loss of lacrimation okay so all these things they will result in the intranuclear lesion at different levels commonest the infection is at the stylomastoid foramen or just above the stylomastoid foramen so bell's palsy is result immediate if just about this cordyumpenai loss of taste sensation so you can easily identify where the patient nerve is involved and previously i told you that this is the very commonest nerve which is involved this is the nerve to stapedius how it is passing and this is the stapedius muscle <coughs> so that is all about the fissure nerve any problem never you are such a good student intelligent student you have never problem
क्या इफिलेटल मीन्स सेम साइड कॉन्ट्रोलेटल मीन्स ऑन अपोजिट साइड इफ द नर्व सप्लाइंग टू दिस स्पेस of this side that is called isthelial contralateral means as i am telling you the lower half of the face is receiving the corticonuclear fibers from opposite side so that is the thing is contralateral okay so contralateral means opposite side and isthelial same side that is very important part so you remember this everything will be clear of the patient nerve palsy okay boys now come in the dh and in another practical classes dh will be there how much part you have dissected in the dissection hmm that is done in the previous week no more from yes so see the part of all the structures in the anterior triangle 